Hi everyone, uh, in this video I'm going to continue the series on the Queen's Gambit Declined with the Lasker Defense, or Lasker's variation uh, in the Queen's Gambit Declined, which I have to say is not one of my favorite lines for black to play, because it's not a fighting opening, it forces beast trades very early on, and gives black an equal position, but nothing more. Of course, if, if white messes up, then black would be better, but with correct play, it's very hard for black to go for an advantage. The last hit is this position here uh, with knight to e4. Let me uh, go through the opening. So we have d4, d5, c4, e6, the queen's gambit, uh, the client, knight to c3, knight to f6, and now bishop g5, bishop e7, which is the main move. We've already looked at the classical or the orthodox, and we had a look at the move b6 yesterday. So knight f3 castles, e3, h6. Now bishop h4 is the main line. Knight e4 is one move. Yesterday we had a look at b6, which is the tartar cover. Knight e4 is the lasker. Uh, if uh, black uh, plays h6 and white takes on, on f6, bishop takes f6, this is the anti tarta cover, of course, stopping the variation with b6, but also stopping the, the Lasker defense. So if you want to avoid the Lasker, uh, then bishop takes f6. But after bishop h4, knight e4, we now have the Lasker defense. At the end of the video, I'm going to have a look, as requested yesterday in the comments, uh, at one game, uh, James Marshall uh, versus Lasker, where Lasker played this position in their World Championship match in uh, 1907. Yeah, this was game 15, the last game, and as you probably know, Lasker crushed Marshall, I think, 11 and a half, 3 and a half. So we are going to have a look at, at the last game from their, from their World Championship match. Okay. After the move knight to e4, uh, one move is sort of forced. Uh, you may be wondering what about bishop g3, which is never played. White always takes on e7. If bishop to g3, eventually uh, black is going to be able to capture that bishop. Opening up the h file wouldn't be as scary, and the bishop doesn't have any prospects. I mean, even if you don't take it, then the bishop isn't that useful here. So after bishop to g3, c5 is the main move, striking in the center, Tarash style, cd5, ed5, bishop to d3, for example, and now knight takes g3. Of course, you don't want to lose a pawn. h takes g3, and now something like c4 is very good. Um, c takes d4 is also fine, knight takes d4. And black is basically equal here, uh, no problems for him. With the bishop pair, if he doesn't want to ruin his pawn structure, then c4, chasing the bishop away to c2, for example. It's very hard to create a battery here if you don't want to close your rook down. And even if you manage, then black can defend. Something like here, here. And it's defensible. So after knight e4, playing bishop g3 is not an option. Another option uh, which may seem sensible is knight takes. Uh, in which case, of course, black is given the option to simply win the bishop pair, so you don't have to take the knight, so bishop takes bishop. If the knight moves, you won a piece. If bishop takes bishop, knight takes, queen takes, the knight would now have to move, and the position is very unpleasant for white. Of course, black has a huge lead in development and should be, should be almost winning. Okay, so after knight e4, the main move is bishop takes e7, queen takes e7. That's basically the only move you have here. Uh, let's have a look at knight e4 in this position. Again, I would like to discard that as a very bad move. So knight takes e4, d takes e4, the knight has to move, of course, to d2. And now we have this, I'm sorry, we have this very common uh, e4 pawn for black, or conversely, it would be e5 for white, which chases away the f3 or f6 knight. And then you follow it up with f5, gaining huge amount, a huge amount of space and making it very hard for white, in this case, to castle kingside. So, for example, bishop e2, e5 can be played immediately. If you take, you are worse. Uh, if you play d5, you are worse. If you castle, then... I'm going to start thinking about stuff like, like f4, and it's not going to be pleasant. Maybe I can go knight f6, f4. So, okay, after queen takes e7, you don't take the knight. Uh, that's not the move. Here we are going to have a look at three main moves for white. Basically, the three only moves white could play, which are good. Bishop d3, uh, I would just like to mention as a playable move, which can transpose to the other lines, but it's not as good. Nobody really plays it on the high level. Okay, so the moves we are going to have a look at uh, are rook c1, queen to c2, and c takes d. Uh, 
Uh, all three are very logical, forcing black to do something. Uh, the last one is forcing black to do something. C takes D is forcing a recapture. The other two simply make sure that you don't ruin your pawn structure and defend the knight. So rook c1 is the main line, queen c2 is the first sideline, side cd5 is a move we are going to have a look at last, and which was also played by James Frank James Marshall in uh, his game against Lasker. So now let's start with the main line. So after knight e4, bishop e7, queen e7, rook to c1. Uh, in this position, after rook to c1, c6 is the main move. The other uh, variation is knight takes c3, which is also very popular. We are going to have a look at both. Let's look at knight takes c3 first. So c6 is the main line. You can see that there is a problem with this bishop. This is going to be a team throughout the main line. So rook c1, the sideline, knight takes c3 first. Rook takes c3, you can take with the b-pawn, but rook takes c3 is more precise. And now c6, very similar position to what we saw, to what we are about to see in the main line. Bishop to e2, white is trying to castle, knight to d7. And now after castles, d takes c4 is the main move. And the only move played in 50 or so very strong games, so high-level grandmaster games, with one exception, one game I'm going to show you. Uh, so bishop takes c4 and now b6. The idea is you want to prepare c5. If you don't go for c5, you're worse. And this has now transposed to the main line, which we can reach this way. So after rook c1, c6, bishop d3, and you take on c3 now. The, the difference is that when you start with c6, the bishop goes to d3. But once you capture on c4, it doesn't really matter whether the bishop was on e2 or on d3. So takes, rook takes, dc4, still the bishop takes, and now we have transposed. Knight d7, castles, b6, bishop to d3, and c5. And here, this is what the Lasker defense is about. Perfect equality, no problems, equal material. It's going to be an almost symmetrical pawn structure with black having a slight disadvantage after bishop e4, rook b8, queen c2, knight f6, dc, knight e4, queen e4, bc. The only problem is these two pawns are isolated. It's not enough to win uh, if black plays correctly and it's simply a draw from this position. b3, bishop to b7, forcing a trade, queen f4, bishop f3, queen f3. There have been several games from this position on the high level, all were draws. Uh, the highest rated Nils Grandelius versus Hikaru Nakamura played three years ago was a draw and it's just not enough. You you don't have enough as white to, to win this position. Rook F to D8, this is just, it's over. Trades are going to happen. You can trade pawns, but it's it's just a draw. And one sideline I would like to mention uh, after castles, D takes C4, I'm sorry, after castles, instead of D takes C4, which is the main line, in one game, uh, Ivanchuk was playing on Ischuk. Uh, Ivanchuk was white, and Donishchuk found a very good idea here. He played rook e8. Now, he lost the game, and the move has never been played since or before. Uh, but it's a very nice idea. I would just like to show the flexibility of the Lasker if you have prep or if you are an imaginative player. The idea was, of course, that after rook to e8, uh, Ivanchuk played queen c2, which is a good move. dc4, bishop c4, you are now playing e5 instead of c5. So after e5, he managed to liberate his bishop without having to play b6. And if a trade happens, if d takes e5, then he also has a 3 to 2 pawn majority. You can look at the whole game uh, if you want to. The game is Ivanchuk, Onishchuk, uh, 2005. It actually has, this position has been reach, reached after that, I'm sorry, Nikhal Sarin, Samuel Sevian in 2019, uh, which uh, Samuel Sevian won. But yeah, if white plays rook c1, uh, the main line, then we are highly likely to reach a symmetrical position like this, where black has a slight structural disadvantage, but it's nothing major. Okay, let's look at queen to c2. Queen to c2... After bishop e7, queen e7, queen c2 is the second most popular move. Uh, black now continues with knight c3, queen c3. d c4, bishop c4, a very similar idea. We are trading on c4 and keeping our structure intact. And now we are going to do something similar to the Tartakower, 
we're going to go b6 I'm sorry b6 and bishop b7 castles bishop b7 bishop b2 and we follow this up with c5 you can start with rook c8 uh, you can't start with knight d7 because queen c7 but c5 is the main line and after c5 dc5 rook to c8 something like b4 bc5 b5 and again the downside of the last cat defense is that you're going to have separate you're going to have to accept the fact that your a and c pawns are going to be separated on a5 on on c5 and a7 and still it should not be enough for for white to win this position has been reached 18 times um, i think 12 draws out of the 18 games so again queen c2 not a really challenging move for for black and still black is equal slightly worse but cannot go for an advantage that being said the last defense is extremely solid so it's very hard to lose but if you're playing a game and not trying to win then you should play i don't know you shouldn't play chess okay now let's look at c takes d5 so bishop e7 queen e7 cd5 knight c3 is the move uh, of course you don't want to allow this this would be just dreadful so takes knight takes would be horrible so you take the knight first uh, there are no intermezzo moves uh, if, for example d6 because knight takes queen and so b takes c3 e takes d5 and now here we have a very thematic position and this is in fact my favorite way to 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 try and fight black, uh, to try and fight the, the last cap defense, because you have a very clear plan. You want to push c4, and it's not easy to stop. You have a downside, of course, the isolated a2 pawn, but your central pawn majority means a lot. And you also have a better light squared bishop. This bishop is opened, that's true, but this one is has more scope. It's queen to b3. Queen to b3 firstly puts pressure on b7, secondly supports c3, c4. And the old way to play, as we are going to see in Lasker's game, is c6, the, the main line now, and the best move is rook to d8. Uh, c4, because the rook to d8 leaves a square on c6 for the knight. That's very important. If you imagine the, the bishop on c4, then a knight on c6 could be annoying looking at the queen and bishop. So c4, of course, black has to take. Uh, there is nothing better, dc4, bishop c4, and now knight c6. And it's very useful to have the knight here, even though uh, d5 is a possibility, because knight a5 could be annoying. So the bishop retreats immediately, and now b6. The idea is, again, to develop your bishop to b7, later on strike with c5. So castles, bishop b7, rook a c1, rook a c8, and now what you want to do is black, move the knight, play c5, and accept the draw. Okay, let's look at uh, Lasker uh, playing his own defense. So the final score, as I said, was uh, 11 and a half, 3 and a half. So we have d4, d5, c4, e6, knight c3, knight f6, bishop g5, bishop e7, e3. And here Lasker sort of hurried with his own defense. Usually this is played with castles first, as we saw. So castles, knight f3, and also knight f3 is played before, before e3. So castles, knight f3, and then you play h6, and then he moves the bishop, and then you play knight e4. In this position, Lasker played knight e4 immediately, which is inferior, because you haven't made Luft for your king. But that being said, you didn't give him an option of playing uh, bishop takes knight, but you did give him an option of playing bishop f4, because now you don't have g5. So bishop f4 may have been possible, but it's definitely not better than bishop e7. So after bishop e7, queen e7, we have a Lasker defense without the knight on f3 and without the pawn on h6. Uh, we have c takes d5 by Frank Marshall, going for what I think is the most principled variation, knight takes c3. And again, it's the same variation, just the pawn is not on h6 and the knight is not on f3. b takes c3, e takes d5, queen to b3, and Lasker plays c6, which used to be the main move. But as I said, it's harder to develop the knight with the pawn on c6. c4, castles, knight to f3 now finally. Uh, and if the pawn were on h6, then this would have been normal. Queen c7 is kind of a weird move, uh, and I don't like that move for black. Uh, because it, well, it looks at, uh, at the c1 square for the moment and at the c3 square, so it's not really possible to do this. If he takes, then 
black wins the rook. So it was kind of a tricky move, but definitely not a good move because you have to develop your pieces and rook c1 is coming. So after rook c1, I mean, this is very weird. This setup is very weird. It would have been much better to, after queen c7, just go bishop to f5. After, I'm sorry, after knight to f3, just go bishop f5. This is a much better and more useful move. I wouldn't really care about this pawn. If he takes it, I don't really mind. This is huge pressure with the king in the center. Where does the queen go? Wherever the queen goes, white is in trouble. But queen c7, rook c1, queen a5 check. A lot of pressure. And here, Frank Marshall went badly wrong. Uh, white is okay here. And Lasker wasted a couple of tempi for, rook, for queen c7, queen a5, which he wanted to use the fact that the king was in the center. Uh, but, but... In this position, uh, white is much better with queen to c3, simply blocking out the check and offering a trade. If this pawn is taken, then rook to c1, I'm sorry, rook to a1 wins the queen. The queen has no squares. So queen to c3 offering a trade, and when, that, when that's taken, white is simply better. No more pressure, a good central pawn mass. This pawn isn't really weak, there's nothing to attack it. Better bishop, you're going to either isolate black's pawn or... or come up with with a way to play e4 and open up the center and start pushing your stuff down the board. Instead of that, Frank Marshall plays rook c3, which is a disgusting move, pinning his own rook. No point in doing that. Uh, I really hated this move. So here, another imprecision by Lasket. What he should have done was bishop f5, just getting his last piece into play. And after something like bishop e2, continued with dc4, bishop c4. Ideally, you want to wait for the bishop to move before you take here, because then you cost it another tempo. And something like b5, chasing the pieces further away. Now you can develop your, your knight and get your knight into play. So I thought this was just more precise. Uh, instead of that, he went knight d7, blocking his bishop in. Still an okay move, not so bad. Uh, knight to d2, unpinning the rook, c5, breaking through the center. And this is a common Lasker defense maneuver, or pawn break. Uh, c takes d, c takes d, e takes d, and now rook to e8 check. And you can see that the game is basically over. So c, c5 was a very good move. Uh, well, threatening to take on d4. What should, have Marshall, what should Marshall have done? I don't know. If I'm white, I'm playing bishop e2, and when he takes, I'm castling and running away, because otherwise I just lose. And I know I'm worse, but I'm not lost immediately. There's something going on on this diagonal, and I may be able to survive. After c5, when Marshall took c takes d5, then c takes d4 while the king is in the center is... You can see that that's over. If you take with the e pawn, you lose. If you don't take, you lose. So now rook e8. Rook to e3, he tried to cover, but now rook takes e3, f takes e3, and this king is basically naked with these pawns. Uh, and after knight f6, bishop e2, knight e4, uh, the knight is pinned, the king cannot castle. Queen d3 has to save uh, the position, but after bishop f5, the king still cannot castle. The king, in fact, can only move to the d1 square, which seems suicidal after rook c8, and yeah, it's just over. Uh, in this position, yeah, I'm sorry, in this position the bishop was hanging, so bishop f5 wasn't as precise as f5, so after f5 the king has to be stuck in the center, because after castles you can then win the knight. Uh, the way Lasker played it with bishop f5, after castles, if you take now, in the end of the variation, your bishop is hanging, so it would still be close to equal. But after castles, he went knight g3. He didn't bother with that. Rook takes f5. Knight takes f5. If you take the knight with your queen, then your knight is hanging, so that, uh, that would be winning. e4, knight e7. And now the position goes on. Lasker sort of lost his initiative. It's now six pawns for Marshall. So if it was Magnus Carlsen playing this position with white, then probably winning. But, yeah, he should have converted this uh, much sooner. Uh, Velasquez went on to win. I'm just going to show you how. But his conversion wasn't precise. Here he got his pawn back uh, and some pieces got traded off. Now he is an exchange up. Uh, so takes, takes. And in this position he gave up. 
Marshall gave up and the game was the game was a win. But as I said, not so precise. After in this position, let's go back. After rook takes f after knight to g3, yeah, rook takes f5, uh, giving up the exchange was the best option. And here, even though black is an exchange up, I wouldn't say it's an easy win. I think white can create sort of a fortress. As I said, if Magnus Carlsen is playing white, I, I wouldn't bet that black can win this. I think it's still a quite a solid position with this very, very aggressive central pawn. But the point is not, not this late conversion. The point is the opening. Marshall went for cd5. We have knight c3, bc3, ed5, queen b3. And from a theoretical standpoint, I think it was important to highlight the difference between uh, rook d8 and c6. Of course, Lasker hasn't castled yet, therefore his way of playing his own defense is inferior because you don't have the option of rook to d8. But even if he had castled, so let's go, let's go to c takes d5. Uh, so in this position after queen to b3, playing c6 is kind of inferior because now you have to figure out a way to do something with your knight. It has been played. The positions usually went bishop d3, knight d7, castles, knight f6, rook ab1, knight e4. So it's playable and you sort of have a solid pawn chain, but you don't think that's necessary. I don't think this is that good because now it's hard to keep defending your b-pawn. Advancing it weakens the c6 pawn, whereas when you play rook to d8, playing b6 later on still leaves your, your pawn structure sort of intact. So this position is way more solid than if the pawn was on c6 having this kind of pawn structure. Okay, to conclude the video, and, and I'm sorry if I... If I was too biased in this one, uh, the Lasker defense is easy to play. It's not hard to learn. It's not challenging for white, and white cannot hope for an advantage unless white. Uh, I'm sorry, black cannot hope for an advantage unless white goes badly wrong. That's why I wouldn't recommend it to players of my level and well, bad players in general, such as me, anybody below 22, 2300, I don't think should be playing this because it's, it doesn't force you to learn because it's quite simple and leads to calm, drawish positions. Still, that being said, if white doesn't know the theory, then you're better. Okay, thank you for watching, guys. Remember, uh, if you want to join me for a stream today at 3 p.m., the link to the Twitch channel is in the description below. Uh, thanks, and stay tuned for more chess. Bye.